In our next example here on how to deal with sound wave interference is um, it's kind of like the ones we did before just previous to this but from a different perspective. Here what we're going to ask is uh, let's say again let me set up the problem for you we have two oscillators they are coherent source oscillators which means that they have the same frequency and the same phase difference in other words that they will both reach a maximum and minimum maximum minimum as the waves leave the sound waves leave the oscillators right here uh, they're two meters apart and you can see that as this person walks this way where he will listen to the sound coming from both oscillators of course, you can see that the distance from there to there is different than the distance from there to there. So as he's walking along the line, no matter where he's at, there's always going to be a phase difference, meaning the waves will have to travel farther from here than they will from here. And so what they're asking now for is, at what positions will he experience a phase difference such that the difference of the wavelengths will be a half a wavelength or a full wavelength, I should say the difference in the sound that he hears will be uh, difference in, will be out of phase by either half a wavelength or a full wavelength. So we're looking for the extra distance traveled by the wave uh, coming from the first oscillator or the second oscillator. So the extra distance will be the distance from this oscillator to wherever he's standing, that would be the distance A, and the distance from this oscillator to where he's standing at the same location, which would be distance X. And of course, A can be found by taking the square root of this side squared, which is two meters squared plus x squared. In other words, a is equal to the square root of 2 of, uh, maybe I'll just write it as 4 plus x squared, uh, 4 plus x squared, like that. And that means that if the extra distance traveled, which of course is equal to the square root of, uh, well actually it's going to be, yeah, the square root of 4 minus x squared minus x, so this is a minus x, if the extra distance traveled is equal to a half wavelength or three halves of a wavelength or five halves of a wavelength in each of those cases and so forth of course then the sound waves will be out of phase by exactly a half wavelength and so when the sound waves come together you'll have complete destructive interference and the person will absolutely hear nothing but if the extra distance traveled is equal to, of course, geometrically it's 4 minus x squared minus x, that's a minus x. If that is equal to a full wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths or so forth, then of course the waves are back in phase and the person will hear a loud sound because when they're back in phase, the amplitude you'll hear will be twice the amplitude you would hear from any one single wave. All right, so at what position of x will you either have destructive interference or constructive interference. And of course, there'll be several positions because there's different cases. So we're going to just uh, assume, oop, I shouldn't draw a line around there. We're just gonna assume uh, these two cases right here. All right, so now, before we do that, let me ask you this question. Of course, I know you can't answer me, but let me ask you again. What would happen if this person walks infinitely far away? Not infinitely far, of course, but very far away, 500 meters, 1,000 meters away. What would be the path length difference then for a wave coming from here and a wave coming from here? And it turns out if you go far enough away, even though it appears that this distance is the hypotenuse of a triangle, if the triangle is long enough, the distance of the hypotenuse will be almost exactly the same as the distance of this line right here. And eventually, if the person walks far enough, there's no phase difference to speak of, and there'll be constructive interference very far away. Of course, you won't hear much because it's too far away from the, from the sound. So that, at least you know that. But let's look at these two cases right here. Let's look for the case where the extra distance is equal to a half a wavelength. What, what would x have to be? Well, first we have to know what a half wavelength is. We know the frequency, we know the velocity, so let's say that velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, which means that the wavelength is equal to velocity divided by the frequency, and so the velocity being 344 meters per second, and the frequency being 688 hertz, and of course you can see that I picked those numbers pretty carefully to get kind of a round number for the wavelength. Well, it looks like that's a half, right? Yes, so that's equal to 0 0.5 meters for the wavelength of the sound, right there. So the first case we're going to solve is the case where the path length difference is such 
that when the two waves come together, they differ by a half a wavelength. In other words, the extra distance traveled by this wave compared to the distance traveled by this wave differs by a half a wavelength. So when they come together, they'll be out of phase by a half a wavelength, and that means that they will destructively interfere, which means you will hear no sound at all. Okay, so let's do that case. So when the extra distance traveled is equal to lambda over 2, and of course, lambda is 0.5 meters, so we take that and divide it by 2, uh, then uh, that will be equal to destructive interference, which means that the path length difference right here, the square root of 4 plus x squared minus x, must equal lambda over 2, which is 0 0.5 divided by 2. All right, now we solve that equation for x, and that will be the position where you will hear no sound. And of course, we don't know yet what the value for that is. Okay, so solving that, I need to move the minus x to the other side. So I have the square root of 4 plus x squared is equal to x plus 0 0.25. Then we square both sides, which gives us 4 plus x squared is equal to square on the right side, that would be x squared plus twice the product of these two, which is 0 0.5x plus the product this one, 0 0.25 divided by times 0 0.25 is 0 0.0625. All right, now notice you have an x squared on both sides, that cancels out, and I can solve this for x. Well, maybe I should multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 0 0.5. So we have 8 is equal to 1x plus double that, that gives me 0 0.15. Oh, no, 0 0.125. Not quite correct, 0 0.125. There we go. Now solving this a little bit further, I can say that when I move this across the other side, I have 8 minus this, so this would be 7.875 is equal to x, and, or x is equal to 7.875, and of course that's in meters. Okay, that means when this person walks out away from the, both of these uh, oscillators, and the person reaches a distance right here where there's no sound, you will have covered a distance of 7.875 meters. And that's where you'll have destructive interference. So the result of this is destructive interference, therefore the person will hear no sound. All right, now of course there's probably other places where the person will hear no sound. That's where the extra distance travel is not a half a wavelength, but one and a half wavelength, so we can do it again. And instead of plugging in 0.5 divided by 2, we'll plug in one and a half wavelength, so it would be 0.75 and do it again. And then if you want to go ahead, so let me write that down, so if you use instead a 0 0.75, which is 1.5 lambda, and solve this problem again, you'll get a different location where you'll hear no sound. And then if you want to go to the case where you, the phase difference is five and a half lambdas, okay, that would be, uh, so the next case would be um, 1.25 equals 2.5 lambda. So if you plug in this value in here and solve for x again, again you'll have a different location where you'll hear no sound. Okay, but now let's do the case right here where the extra distance travels equal to a whole wavelength. Then of course the two waves will be back in phase and the person will hear a loud sound. Where will that occur? Well, let's set up the equation. So in this case the extra distance traveled is equal to a full wavelength. A full wavelength, of course, is 0.5 meters. So the difference in the distances traveled by the sound would be the square root of 4 plus x squared minus x, that's the extra distance traveled, equals a full wavelength of 0 0.5 meters. All right, again, solving for x, I move this across, we get the square root of 4 plus x squared is equal to x plus 0 0.5. Square on both sides, I get 4 plus x squared is equal to x squared plus x plus 0 0.25, using binomial theory. Then, of course, you realize that x squared cancels on both sides just like before, and then solving that for x, moving this to the other side, you get 4 minus 0 0.25, or 3.75 equals x, so x equals 3.75 meters. So, which means that if he walks closer to where the oscillators are, to a point that looks roughly almost halfway in between here, right there, if he walks to this point right there, where the distance x is equal to 3.75 meters, which now means that the path length difference is a little bit different, 
Okay, like this and like this. Now you can see that the path length difference is greater to the amount of a full wavelength. And then, of course, at this point, you have constructive interference, which means you hear a loud sound. Well, I guess then if he keeps walking this way, there will be a place where he has no, no sound, sound, no sound, sound, and so forth, until he's too close, where you cannot find any more places where you have either complete destructive or de constructive interference. But that's how you deal with sound interference, and that's how you find locations where you'll hear sound because of constructive interference or no sound because of destructive interference.